Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Bernoon here. It is August the 18th, uh, 2024 here uh, with Israeli News Live. And you guys probably don't even recognize the guy on the screen there. That's a little bit younger view of Brother Greg Wrenchin. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of people know him as uh, Colonel Greg. And uh, but he is, I consider, a very precious friend, a dear friend, uh, you know, even though we have not met in person yet, we've spent so many hours talking together. We text together. He's always making sure I'm doing all right and uh, and vice versa. I like to know that he's OK. And Brother Greg, I want to thank you for joining us again. You have people have been asking so much that my wife got the messages finally. Where is Colonel Greg at? We got to get him back on. God bless you, brother. <laughs> God bless you, Steve, for letting me come on. There's a lot of things going on out there uh, with technology, especially with fallen angel technology. Um, we reversed engineered the TRB3, and I got to see a film of that. And I guess it's on YouTube now, but um, we gave three to a fighting force that we're backing. And um, we got the new SR-72 um, Dark Star. Wow. It's a, it's a run up of the SR 71. And what it has is four engines on it. It can fly 8,600 miles an hour top speed. Um, but it's got four engines on it two for just regular flying slow, and then two for hypersonic speed when they get up there to 80, 90,000 feet. And it goes so fast that it had to have rare metals. Now, where they got the metal to do this, they don't say. But they had to have a special metal because the whole plane uh, turns orange hot. That wow! That all right? That, that's gonna you're raising up a couple of thoughts in my mind, and I want to just ask you about this, brother Greg. And that is, I'd heard at one point uh, through some intelligence sources and stuff that in this war that Israel is facing uh, with Iran, Hezbollah, the whole Middle East, pretty much up and going, going to be going up in flames. Uh, Russia may get involved in this, at least if nothing else, they definitely will probably get involved in helping to arm uh, Iran uh, with Hezbollah, etc. But I was told that we would see some of the technology, alien aircraft technology that we've reverse engineered getting involved in this fight. You're now bringing up these two different uh, craft that you just said now. And mm -hmm. uh, so I'm really curious, is that what you know of as well yes they did haven't uh, made the sr-72 dark star um in service yet but the trb3s are and some were sent to israel and i don't know if they sent some to ukraine or not but they do move they can fly about you know between five and eight thousand miles an hour and they don't make no noise i seen. i watched it it hovers, it turns, and it's got superior firepower on it. And it can go in and out of dimensions quick. That that's and it, and that's hard. crazy. That's that's absolutely yeah. crazy. Now let me ask you this, Brother Greg, is uh, uh one of the things that also that I'd learned about, this has been a while back, don't even really remember my source on this, but that is that there are certain aircraft that they that they literally and and you may have been my source on this that they go up into space and they build the frame of it there because like in the case of the old uh, Blackhawk years ago they said when the thing mm -hmm. would take off fuel would be pouring out on the ground because it'd have to have it so loose because when you go up so high or something like that it begins to expand and it's got to have room for all that metal to seal up. And now I'm hearing that they were building parts of these things in space uh, so that that wouldn't happen. And I believe that was with the TRB-3. Is that the case or, or, or do I have that kind of mixed up? Yeah. No, you don't have it mixed up at all. They did build some of it up in space and in the space shuttle. They're assembling some of it. And some of these uh, SpaceX rockets, I would imagine, are probably part of it. You know, Elon Musk. But um, the TRB-3, uh, they, they reversed engineered that thing. And I mean, I, I was just flabbergasted. It was exactly like the, the look of a UFO. And it, it 
flew exactly like a UFO does. It's unbelievable. Um, so the metal, you know, <clears throat> the only country I know that has abundancy of rare metals, of rare earth metals is China. So I don't think that we have enough rare, rare metal to put it in production and if it weren't for, for, for the underground base technology. Wow. That's the way to put it. Well, I will say, uh, and this is kind of interesting, we mentioned special metals and everything. When my father passed away, uh, he had a sand mining operation down in Florida, and of course the state got involved, and I'm having to deal with the liquidation of that uh, for, for my dad's mm -hmm. family that, uh, they're, that inherit this. But oddly enough, I actually, because of my wife sharing with me about titanium being in sand, we did some testing, and oddly enough, we had 4% titanium uh, at his newest pit that he had. Uh, and, of course, that's nowhere near like a rare metal like what you're talking about. But, uh, but still, there's not a lot of titanium pits in the United States. Most everything is overseas. Well, titanium can't even take the scene. Um, the SR-71 was built out of titanium. And what they've got now is even lighter and stronger and can resist heats of over 2,500 degrees. Good night. Now, yeah. and, and here's what throws me off. I did not even know that we had reverse engineered the, where our technology could go interdimensional. I can't, you know, now it, it makes sense, though. I mean, if we go back and think about the Philadelphia experiment back in the 40s and what happened yeah, there. Yeah, did and, and people yeah. think that, that the U.S. abandoned that technology. But in fact, and Brother Greg, you tell me what you know about this. One thing that was shared with me was that Iran had been given that same technology. It kept being more and more developed. We developed it. The Chinese got a hold of it. I guess the Russians as well. And they give it to the Iranians. And back, I actually reported this a little while back. They had launched a missile from Syria towards the Demona nuclear power plant, uh, and Israel never saw it coming. And they intentionally did not try to hit the plant, but they sent it more or less as a message, we can drop this in here and you won't even know it. Uh, what, yeah. what thoughts do you have on those things? Well, I know that Iran still likes um, the technology for hypersonic weapons, but it's in bed with Russia who also has their underground bases in fallen angel technology as well. Um, these fallen angels are playing all sides of the card so that everybody's bad at everybody. And, but uh, I don't think they, I think that could have happened, but it wasn't going hypersonic. You know, if it had been hypersonic, it'd have been a different story. So that was to let them know, maybe that was to let them know that they had a hypersonic weapon. Well, you know, I don't, in, I don't when, when Iran uh, did their strike back, of course, they, they give the heads up. I mean, it really was not a surprise attack. They had told the French government they were going to retaliate. What was that, about six months ago, I guess? And, yeah, uh, yeah. And they brought it. They even flew, flew their drones from Iran. They were basically giving them time to shoot down pretty much everything. Uh, so the U.S., you know, they had a lot of target practice during that time. But there were three missiles— uh, and I saw video footage of it, and I've seen Russia's video footage of their hypersonic missiles going into Ukraine, and it appeared to be that Iran was using the hypersonic technology that they hit the base with there, uh, but they tried to downplay that quite a bit. Now, bringing that out, Brother Greg, you had mentioned to me right before going on the air here that uh, there you wanted to talk more about the fallen angel technology Share with me what your what your knowledge is on this. Well, I know that they did regular <clears throat> flying saucers, the typical one that you see. They make them work as well. Now, whether they're using them as weaponry or not, I don't know. But they're using a reverse electromagnetic field. And I don't know what that means. I haven't looked in my – I got a physics book. I need to look and see what that means. But anyway, it goes to zero gravity. So, I mean, it just lifts right up, and they know how to control it, up and down, up and down. And I, I, they were working on that when I was down there, 
and I just never thought they would be able to do it. So many people died working on that from explosions and this and that, and they finally did it. And what it does is the center of it, it'll light up real bright. And then the whole thing will light up real bright, and then it's just gone. And I believe they got a lot of that technology from CERN. Well, that that is, that's nuts, right? And, and of course, when you mention CERN, let's clarify that, Brother Greg, because I've heard so much. And I know about CERN from a good friend of mine that was uh, in Germany who is a scientist who was invited to work at CERN. Uh, I've heard a lot of other intel about it, about them. Not only do they go into other dimensions and things like that, but they have communicated with these fallen angels in these other dimensions. Can you elaborate more about what your knowledge is on this? My knowledge is, is that they actually brought them through. In other words, they're not just collaborating with them. They brought them through. And I know this, um, they're empty in the underground tunnels. Um, wow. Some of the stuff they have down there, you know, the beings, because they're trying to make room to build their own uh, utopia down there, the humans where they can hide during, during the war. So war is imminent here too. Yeah. And all these rich people are going underground. And so they decided, you know, let's just, you know, this is costing us trillions of dollars. Let's just get rid of all of them and let them loose. Now, this, Brother Greg, I, I, I recently I interviewed a young lady by her name. Uh, she goes by the name Fringe. It's not her real name. Uh, she spoke quite a bit in depth, and that's where my wife saw several requests for you to come back on. Uh, she was sharing. She'd been, she's 55 years old. Uh, she is a 25-year uh, police officer, retired. Uh, her husband also a police officer. And uh, she shared a, quite a bit of an interesting story about abductions that she went through in her life. And she talked about shadow beings. She talked about, she made the statement that demons and aliens, she do not does not believe are one and the same. Uh, I've heard that before from other uh, intel sources that they're really not the same. There is a difference between a demonic spirit being a spirit, not a, a physical bodied fallen angel uh, in this world here. And she also spoke about the reptilians, shape shifting. I'm kind of giving you a whole bunch of things to think about, Brother Greg, but uh, just so that you could elaborate on that for us. Well, Number one, they are demons. They uh, they can go into another dimension. It makes them demonic enough right there. You can't kill what's already dead. And, you know, my experience is they were all demonic. They all had a demonic message. And each one told a different lie. They could never, ever get their story straight. So, you know, I didn't know the Lord or nothing then. And so, you know, I was going on what I seen, you know what I mean? Yes. Not what I knew, because all I knew was that. That's all I knew. And, you know, and I knew they were demons because on Halloween, that was our busiest day of a pagan holiday. That was our busiest day. That's when everybody was on guard because so many, so much paranormal things would happen down there. It was unbelievable. And it's because people summons them up on Halloween. Wow. And, and you know, these underground bases are portals for these things. They're portals. You all know, of them. Yes. I and mean, I'm going to take... <laughs> I live in the twilight side of it. The outer zone kind of thing. And, you know, I could feel it. When they switched dimensions and stuff, it felt like ice cold black air. I told a friend of mine, it was so dark down there that it felt like you're walking in a mist of tar. That's how bad you could feel it. Wow. And Brother Greg, would raise that in your head. Yeah. let me ask you this. When when we're talking about these these entities, these demonic entities, whether we're talking about reptilians or, you know, I know there's just more than 100 different species. I think you said at one point, what was it, 160 different species of aliens? Is that right? Yes. 
And when we when we consider all this, I mean, this is a world that people have really, I mean, it, it's, it nearly baffles most Christians. And, and this is something that gets me as well, because one thing that she made a comment about, she said a lot of people, and it really would upset her. She said they would, because she, you know, she said she was a, you know, she said, I had always been a very staunch Christian my whole life. And they would, you know, she said, of course, then she gets these messages written to her, you know, about, well, why didn't you, uh, you know, say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. And, and one thing I did say to her personally was that I told her, I said, look, I said, I don't fault you for that. I said that none of us could ever, unless you've been there, know what it's like to deal with these types of demons. I said, but at the same token, if you take just the story of Job, God was so pleased with that man. He allowed him to go through all this. And I'm sure he did a whole lot of rebuking, but didn't do a whole lot of good because he didn't know what was really going on behind the scenes. Right. Job had it the worst of things. <laughs> I mean, I think he had it worse than anybody in the, since this time. Yes. And um, he, they, I think they, they were afraid of Job because even Satan was. Because God had his hand on Job. And Job thought if he took everything away, the, 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 uh, Satan, uh, I mean, Satan thought if he took everything away from Job that he would be in for the attack. And Job never gave an inch. But he was available for attack too, you know what I mean? And yes. even back then, Jesus casted out demons before he even died. That's exactly right. And then you think, if you think about it, Brother Greg, you got Daniel, and Daniel, when he was praying, Gabriel, when he gets to him, he said, look, I heard your prayers 21 days ago. Yeah, I got detained. Yeah, but he had to he fight through detained. devils all the way there. Yeah, it's terrible. That's the second heavens. So is, what, is, uh, is what you know from the things that you've experienced, Brother Greg, I mean, I would assume that the things that you've been through is like getting a real view of the demonic side that most people only hear about. Right. You're right. And nobody wants to believe it. But I'm telling you, when these things come and they are going to come, make no mistake about it. God said they were coming. Yes. And when they come, you know, I tell people, I'll be, I'm not, I'm not, afraid I'm just scared of them there's a difference there's not it's not a fear it's a, it's a just kind of a like watching a creepy movie type of thing right to me but people who have never seen it will die of <laughs> a heart attack when they see it I'm telling you so just like there's, the scripture there, there, says there'll be such fearful sights when it says coming up on the earth the man's heart will yeah, fail for fear. Brother Gary, what do you know? Because if you think about coming up on the earth, is that from another dimension? On the earth, they have to come from under the earth. <laughs> exactly. To come up on it, they have to be under it. So, get, you know, Brother Gary, I mean, uh, Brother Greg, sorry. I, I, I got, I got okay. Brother Gary on my mind, too, because he's been writing me quite a bit. We've been texting a little bit back and forth. And... Uh, you know, he's had a lot of experiences himself in life. But I want to ask you this, Brother Greg. I, I want, I really want, I feel like that the hour is so late that we are, people are really fixing to face, especially with the earth on the brink of war like never before. I believe this is what's going to really drag a lot of these evil spirits and demons and fallen angels and reptilians and every other type of creature out from around this earth, dimensions, etc. Can you share, Brother Greg, from your heart, and, and, the depths of what they're about to say? From my heart, here's what's going to happen. When they come out, it's going to be like Hitler's army coming down through the woods. That's how many there are. There's more than that. There's enough demons. It, from what I understand, there's billions of them, way more than the Earth's population. So there's like, you know, five or six for every one person. And so there are always one hanging around bothering you. But when you see these things coming, the only way I can tell you to get prepared is, you know, you got to 
uh, Yeshua or Jesus, whatever you want to use, you got to use, you got to, you got to be in tune with him because he's the one who gives you the signs and wonders and stuff. And he's, he promises he wouldn't do anything without sending out his prophets first. So there's so many false prophets out there. You got to be real weary on who, who's telling the truth and who ain't. Amen. And that, that's how you're going to know when they're coming because the prophets will come first. And, you know, there's, is the gift of prophecy. So I just, had, you know, I've seen it in small quantities that were, you know, things happen when they said, but God doesn't, uh, well, it was almost exactly like he said, no, it'll be exactly like he said. Do you think, Brother Greg, <laughs> do, you th do you think that we might, even like when we look at the two witnesses of Revelation, do you think that that might be the voice that warns the people uh, just before this? And at the same time, could you elaborate? I know, Brother Greg, we've talked so much, even privately. You've said a lot more things to me that you've not said maybe publicly, but I want people to really well, you understand. Were the CIA, you can keep a secret. <laughs> right? So, amen. Thank you. And, and, but whatever you feel that you could share, I want, I, I want people to be able to smell it, see it, taste it from what you've experienced and maybe given some examples. I know you've been down in Dulce before, and I've only heard of the horrors down in Dulce. Uh, if oh, you could maybe man. share some of that. Yeah, down in Dulce. This is a big pill to swallow, everybody, but it's the truth. When you believe it or not, they eat children down there. They use them in ceremonial things. So when they allow the nine-month abortion thing, and they say they're putting the baby aside till they figure out what to do with it, and you never hear from it again, what do you think they did with it? Wow. They're, they're trying to keep these things satisfied for now so that they don't come up until they're, we're ready for them to leave. And... They will eat you. They will eat people. They're cannibals. They hate you. They hate the very, your very existence. They're jealous because they think they should be in this position and not us. And so when you get something that's, you know, 14, 15, 20 feet tall that hates you, that has teeth the size of your head and wants to just devour you, that's when you're going to have to know what to do. And you got to, you know, maybe, maybe even me, maybe I'll be in a position where I can't do anything about it and just die. But, you know, make sure that you die for the right reasons and make sure that you're searching God out for the right reasons and quit worshiping pagan holidays because it causes an uproar down in the tunnels. I never said that before, but I thought I'd say it now. Oh, I just, well, when there was pagan holidays, you know, that Christmas was the, Satan's high holy day. Did you know that? I did not know that. They say that that's their holiday, and that's their high holy day, Christmas. Whenever there was a, 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 a pagan holiday, and we knew them, we knew them, we knew what they were, that it was really hard to control down there. Those were our dreaded days. We dreaded it. You know, here comes Christmas. Remember what that Satanist told us? It was their day, their high holy day, and that the Catholic Church changed it and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I just took it because I didn't know God, anything about God. So I just took it as it was going to be another bad day. Bro <laughs> Brother Greg, share share with the listeners, you know, we, I, and the way I've always understood this, the main government aspect is not, even though they are involved, it's more of the private, like Lockheed Martin, uh, and and I'm just using names. I'm not trying to pin it on them per yeah, se. But like, works. right. What what is their involvement with these entities? And what I mean, have they basically sold their birthright out, so to speak, in order to be able to gain the money? Or is it that these entities are controlling them to be able to bring about eventually a global war? Both. They're doing both. Yeah, a lot of people are in it for the money and a lot of people are in it for the power. These uh, entities offer amazing deals to people. 
you know, I've even been confronted, and I don't really want to elaborate on it, but um, uh, just watching, look, it's the pagan holidays that caused the ruckus. And remember, I told you that they really went crazy on Christmas, and remember the Lord said, take, pray that the pregnant women, don't, that their flight don't take place in the winter. And <clears throat> there's a lot to that right there. And what does Halloween do to them? Halloween um, makes them fight amongst each other. Who's going to this one and that one? And, and you know what? One time I was down there and I could actually hear humming and stuff. And it was people summings and summing, summoning demons. Is what I was told. Mm. And it was on Halloween. And you'd see some of them just disappear. They, they had to come back. They had to come back or they die. What, but what if brother you call one, he's, he's going to come to you. When we're talking about these different types of, of entities out there, and I mean, can you share with us, I know, you've, I know you have seen reptilians before. Uh, if you could talk about them and maybe some of the others that you've actually seen, what they look like, what they smell like, um, you know, just just giving a kind of an overall view. Okay. Most of them have the smell of death. If you've smelled an animal carcass before, that's what they smell like. And we'd have gas masks on only because of the smell, not because just the danger. It's because of the smell. You couldn't take it and gag you to death. And <clears throat> like the Palladians, they smell like burnt sulfur. You can... You can the, half of them smell like sulfur, <clears throat> half of them smell like death, and the reptilians are so um, evil looking, they're scary looking. No matter how many times I've seen one, it scared me every time i seen it. It was like, oh, Lord, if these things ever got in touch. Did you ever see a Komodo dragon? Uh, I think I know what you're talking about, yes. Look at the size of the claws on that thing, and you'll be looking right at a reptilian's hand. Wow. That Komodo dragon has four inch long claws. Now, and they can they can swallow things three times. They eat their own body weight in one day. Good night. I watched one yesterday on a show um, where they showed the Komodo dragons and they all, one of them gives them a bite and they wait for two days while it dies because they, they give them a, a lethal dose of venom. And then they come out of the woodwork, and 10 or 12 or 15 of them are gone, and they devoured that entire water buffalo in an hour. Good. Every every bit of it, nothing left but bones. Even the even the hindquarter leg went down his throat. Now, those are the closest things to what reptilians look like if they were standing on hind legs, as I can tell you. Have you ever have you ever seen there was a series I think it came out on Netflix called Stranger Things. Are you familiar with that, brother yeah. Greg? No, but my friend is. In your in they, your view, they, those creatures that they show on there, which I'm sure they the actors were using like kind of human or I don't know if they were using actual real actors or was you know with a suit on or how they did all this CGI, who knows? Has that does that look like anything you've ever seen in the alien world? Yeah, I've seen parts of Stranger Things, you know, and yes, it does. The only thing that turns me off about it is they summons things. Right. And, um, I well, you know, but, that, you mentioned that that's a good point right there. If is one thing I've wondered, Brother Greg, do you think that some of these whether it be series, movies, whatever they have out there, do you feel like that that for some reason Hollywood is trying to condition the minds of the people to accept what's coming? That's exactly what's happening because every uh, I like to watch the, the trail cam footage and stuff like that on, on YouTube. And I can tell you which ones are real, the rakes and all this other stuff. And you know that you can talk about um, let's say you're talking about a reptile that's really mean and scary. And you can get the public on, on Facebook and everybody to agree on it. And guess what? You just summon the other thing up and it's going to look exactly like you wanted it to. Wow. That, that's nuts, yep. right? But you know what? I mean, think about it, you know. 
uh, if we, what would be the difference? And you know, some people might say right now as they're listening, they might think, oh, now brother Greg, now that just can't happen. But you know what? Think about it in the reverse. Okay. Jesus said, if you draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. Right? So us right. drawing and pulling on God draws him near to us. And think about it in this respect here. You let's take for example, just we'll pick on men for a minute. You get to looking at a girl, and and you may not see her to to for another month or two, but all of a sudden that thought starts coming back in your mind. It and you really and you got bad thoughts for her on your mind. It will cause you to draw a spirit from that other realm that will cause your body to begin to react, and you have no idea. It's not that girl. You got a de evil spirit there that you're entertaining at that point there. So I think, like you said, Brother Greg, people are summonsing these spirits a lot of times, and they probably don't even realize what they're doing. Oh, yeah. Anger summons them, too. Like, I wish that guy would get killed by a, by a shark, blah, 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 blah. You just keep on and on and on, and you'll get killed by a shark, and so will he. And, you know... You can summons up anything that you want to by Ouija board or however they do it, you know. And what gets me about those shows is they beg and beg and beg for it. And then when it comes, they run out. And they never want to go back. Well, you better hope that thing didn't attach itself to you and you're taking it home with you. Wow. I highly advise against any ghost hunting any spirit boxes, spirit boards, or anything, because the spirit board was used in the underground tunnel, especially at Dulce, to summons demons. It was there to summons up things that they didn't have. And they came, it's funny because, like, just, just for an example, this isn't, didn't happen, it's just for an example. Let's say that I'm going to summons a T-Rex, and I get a million people online to agree with me that I seen it and that it's coming, they'll sum it up. Wow. That's a fact. You know, there was, you mentioned like, like these Ouija boards and things, brother Greg. And I remember one time someone was sharing some information we had discovered over in the middle East and they brought it back and it was likened to, they said, not really a Ouija board, but it was, it was kind of like, it wasn't what you thought it was, but it had like symbols on it. And the scientists were trying to figure out how to use this thing. And uh, finally they got what they said, equivalent to what we would call a phone call. Something was dialing in and that wasn't like ringing like a telephone, but they realized that that ancient looking board thing, whatever it was, was literally making a call back to them now. When they decided to answer the signal, they brought in, from what I was uh, told, a worm-looking creature that just began, killed several of the people that were there to the point to where they ended up dumping a bunch of concrete down into that area where that, was, that thing was at underground to seal it off so it couldn't get up any further and do any more harm. So or, or, so we're looking at even things like that, I would assume. And, and then what's really weird is they had that movie. I never saw it myself, but I remember, you know how it is, you're flipping through uh, uh, the channel or something, and the next thing you know, they'll show you previews of some kind of movie, and they had this huge-looking worm thing on the screen or something. I'm like, good, I wonder if... Of course, you know, it's nowhere near that big from what I heard, but still at the same time, like you said, you know... What are we drawing to us? What is this world drawing to ourselves with, especially with all this evil and the wars and the killings and stuff? You know, I, I can't well, even begin know, to imagine. The devil's the one who sends us to war and won't let us come home. He's the one who does it, Baal, um, sitting on the throne. You know, um, Baal is like the top demon uh, to Satan. Well, he is Satan, Baal. And um, then you got Beelzebub and these, this and that. They, they don't have time to fool with people like me and you. 
that the that's left up to Satan where they those kind of demons go for world leaders and stuff. They're trying to take over the world and the reptilian race is trying to do the same with him in accordance with him. And so anything that you summons up, you're just making things worse and worse. I mean, come on, look at it 10 years ago and look at it right now. Tell me that every day doesn't get worse and worse and worse. That's because evil people are coming across our borders that are into voodoo and all this stuff, and they're summonsing demons on the United States. They're summonsing poverty. They're summonsing um, injury, death. I want to go down the avenue of shape shifting, and I hear okay. all kinds of uh, people talk about things, you know, and sometimes I think some of it is just, you know, ridiculous, but yet at the same time, uh, and it's actually maybe a twofold thing. So let me go ahead and give you both sides so you can speak about this, Brother Greg. When Fringe was mm -hmm. on with me and I interviewed her, she said that they were, the, the especially the reptilians, were very much involved in a, a, a hybrid human program where they would abduct both men and women both. Uh, they would artificially inseminate these women with alien DNA wrapped into these children, then, of course, after about three months of gestation, the women wouldn't even know it for the most part. They would come and take the child from the womb. Then the child would be finished going through the process in their underground alien bases type thing. She believes well, that they're doing this for a uh, basically to create a new human race for the earth. Um, they are. Okay, that's they what I wanted to get your that. thoughts on all that. And, and not only are they doing that, down at Dulce, that's where they have the incubators for the babies down there. And after they've been, those, I don't know how they get to get the, out of the womb. It's an interdimensional thing, I guess, because it has their DNA. But they get it out of the womb and they put them in these um, uh, incubators at Dulce. And they look like kind of like honeycombs but not quite they're a little bit more rounded and they glow green and there's a pathway that goes in between two as far as you can see walls of them as far as you can see now they've already done it they're walking among us now i guarantee you that if you go into walmart or some busy street somewhere that you've walked past them i promise you wow now you walk past them I've seen them shape shift into a human, and you could not tell one iota of the difference. When she mentioned that to me, and she talked about the shape shifting, one story that she told me that was really interesting, and I was able to back it up from one of the ancient Egyptian writings that we discovered back in the 40s. She said that there was a woman that have been taken aboard. She says, no, whether or not we're really on a spaceship or if they just made us think we're on one, she said, I don't know the answer to that. She said, but this reptilian was about to rape this woman, you know, or, or, or not. Mm -hmm. When we say, when I say rape, because it was not, it was not, it was against her will, not that like we'd see on the earth, but still it's against her will regardless. She said, suddenly... The reptilian shapeshifted and looked just like her husband, and she didn't think nothing of it anymore. And when yeah. she said that to me, I said, now, oddly enough, in the Egyptian books that they discovered, I said, in fact, I saw this, this, the very scholar from Princeton University that years ago called those Gnostic writings recently came out. She's in her 70s now, and she said, I... I actually stand corrected. She said five of those books we know to be what should have been labeled early Christian writings. She said, I just didn't know and neither did my team know what else to call them in the beginning. But I just say that to kind of clarify. Here's what was written in one of those books that she called early Christian writings now. It stated in there that when these fallen angels came down and tried to cohabitate with the women that we see in Genesis 6 on the earth, they refused them. They would not have anything to do with them. 
but it says they came back a second time, and this time they appeared to them as if they were their husbands. Then the women consented, not knowing that it was fallen angels. Now that's actually written there, and we've never known that all these you know you know years and you know all these centuries that went by that knowledge got lost. But here we had that there that only confirmed what she had spoke about herself. So if you could, Brother Greg, talk about that a little bit. About the shape-shifting? <clears throat> yes, yes. What your knowledge okay. is on that. They can shape-shift. What they do, uh, in her case, I believe, that the, the spirit, or did she, did she actually witness the shape-shifting happening? She saw it happening in what she said that she thinks it is. And I've actually heard this before from other people, but she said, I believe that what it is, she said, it's that we perceive that they have changed, but it's because something maybe goes on in our own brain. She said, I don't know if they really do change their form or if they just got ability to make us think that they change their form. No, 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 no. They change their form. If they don't have innocent blood to drink or to rip apart, they cannot. That's why they have those those uh, parties that they have, like uh, at uh, Bohemian Grove and different places. Because everybody's partaking in a demonic ritual. Everybody. They're partaking in a demonic ritual on a pagan holiday. And then they manifest these things and they come up as reptilians. And they could shape shift into anything. They could shape shift into a tree. And you not know it. Well, I that, they, that, they, that's fascinating. You just said that, brother, because... I guarantee you there's people right now, Brother Greg, when you said that, they're probably like, yeah, right. But you know what, Brother Greg? Oddly enough, in some of those writings there, I never, you know, you don't know what to think about it sometimes, but I've actually seen yeah. that statement right there turning into a tree and them not know it. Yeah. You know Devil's Tower at Wyoming? Uh, I've heard of that, Yes. That big high mountain, that's a tree stump. Yes. You yes. go up to the yeah, that's a tree stump. So that if they if the, the Nephilim had to cut it down because it was cut and you can see the rings on the top of it that it was a tree. And if the Nephilim were able to cut that down, can you imagine how big they were? Well I mean those those trees almost reached in the sky. Those those trees reached in the sky. Brother Greg, <laughs> there, there in the in the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls, it is written that the fallen the children of the fallen angels, when they drop, when they were dropping dead on the earth, they looked like mountains laying on the earth. Yeah, and I think some of them became rock mountains. I I believe that as well. In fact, I know that there has <laughs> been mountains that uh, there is one, I think it's out in the Far East, that they literally looks like the anatomy uh, physically of a human, of a woman, uh, the bottom half of a woman there. And allegedly there were uh, samples taken and they, ch they tested it and it tested the DNA of a human being. Yeah, that's the truth. And, you know, I haven't seen one that big. But down there where I was at, in order for all, any security leader to take control of a place, you had to know everything. We had a need to know on anything we asked. Because how are you going to protect something if you don't know what it's about? How are you supposed to protect everybody? So they told us. And uh, we watched films and different things. Um, I, see, I watched the whole film on Project Blue Book, and that poor guy was lying out of his teeth. But anyway, um, that's when I found out about these trees. And it really interested me, all these high mountains. If you look at the top, you can see the rings in them. And this guy, I wish I could find it on YouTube again. I found a guy who had 
a whole collection of all the trees that were cut down by the Nephilim. And um, I believe that they cut them down during the flood to try to escape it. But now a lot of people don't believe this, that, you know, those fallen angels aren't stupid. They knew that the flood was coming. They knew it. And they barricaded themselves underground. Now, I've had somebody tell me I'm absolutely wrong that God drowned them all, that even Noah's wife was a Nephilim. Give me a break. <laughs> well, I can tell you, know? you we know that they, some, something survived, and we know that because when you read in the book of Numbers and Moses wrote about this, and uh, I've taught on this for years now, and it's not in one, it's in more than one place. You have it in Genesis, you have it in the book of Numbers, but specifically in one verse in the book of Numbers chapter 13, I think it's the last verse in there, he talks about, uh, this is when Joshua and Caleb and the spies came over, they come back, they're giving their report, and they said, we saw the Nephilim, and it literally spells it out in Hebrew, you know, Nephilim, and they said, who were the sons of Anak, not Enoch, but A-N-A-K, Enoch, who was mm -hmm. of, and it literally spells it, Nephilim. Now, they put the vowels like it's a Nephilim, but the Yod is missing between the Fe and the Lamed. And so, therefore, right, I know, the fallen one. right, it's the fallen ones. In other words, Anak's father was an actual fallen angel. So, how well, did I that happen? Well, you got to remember. You got me on that. Uh, right. Uh, so the angels that yeah. got in prison were the ones that got caught first. The fallen angels that got in prison, they were imprisoned. Their children died. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that there wasn't more angels that didn't come down and do things after the flood because evidently that's what he's writing in the book. And we ended up with giants on the other side of the flood. So something was going on. Well, you know, when you cast out a demon, you're supposed to send it to the hot, dry places, right? You get him as far away as you possibly can. You sure don't yeah, want to cast him out and let him hang place. around. Yeah, Death Valley. That's why they stay in the deserts. Death Valley's loaded with demons. It's just loaded with demons. And I, I, I won't even go there. But um, when you send them to the hot, dry places, what makes, them, makes you think that they can't go to the moon and to Mars? They're spirits. Yes. And those are two hot, dry places. <laughs> you know, it's interesting you, know? you say that, Brother Greg. What do you know about the bases that are the base that was found on the moon? The U.S., uh, I think Russia uses this as well. Uh, this base that they discovered up there, they have no idea when it was built. It's, it's so ancient, uh, but yet it is being used. And from what I understand, it's like on the north side, just behind the edge of the uh, the top side of the moon there. Are you aware of that? Yeah, I am. And um, I've seen pictures of it, but they were blurry. Um, they blurred them. Mm. But I've seen pictures of them. And they're all over the place. Um, um, they're storage tanks, all kinds of stuff. And, but they were blurred, you know, by the CIA, I guess. Yes. But But they do exist there. And uh, the face on Mars wasn't no accident. That was a god they worshipped, I'm sure. And uh, there's just a whole lot of anomalies on those two planets that are totally plausible. Because even though these things don't come from a distant star system, doesn't mean that they can't fly around it. They may know how to open up wormholes, you know, bring the two holes together, fold the paper in half and bring them together. And that's what a wormhole is. If you take a sheet of paper, you put a hole on one end and a hole on another, and you fold those two holes till they touch. That's how it works. That's how they go interdimensional and go instantly. They just step over into the other, and then it unfolds, and then they're back where they were. Wow. That is so nuts. All right, Brother Greg, I, I don't want to keep you too long tonight, Brother, but I want to ask you just maybe in a final question with all the world in chaos like it is right now, we've got Israel, Iran, we've got Russia, Ukraine, we've got China, Taiwan, we've got threats that the U.S. is facing from every direction. Both our borders are compromised. Uh, Chinese troops are on the north side, south side. We have 
every brand of people you can think of from all over the world on the south side of the border coming across illegally. With everything that's about to happen and war about to break up everywhere, it almost makes me wonder if Satan is not about to have a smorgasbord on the planet Earth when all these bodies are laying there. And I, and I actually have wondered, this is just something new coming to my mind, but I think about when the scripture talks about that all these birds and stuff come and feast yourselves on the corpses on That's the earth. Right. Could it be mm -hmm. an analogy of something else? It is an analogy of something else. You got the giants and you got the birds and you got reptilians and then you got mantises. You got every kind of monster you could think of out there with a tail. Um, you got rakes. You've got Bigfoot. Look at all the stuff that's out there. And I guess everybody got together on the UFOs and all this and collaborated a lot. Everybody in, in the world collaborated a lot because most people say, oh, that's ours, that's ours, that's ours. Well, there's only one of them that I know that's ours right now. And um, what I see happening is I think that we will have a limited nuclear war first. I don't think it'll be total destruction right away. Right. I, 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 do I agree be, with that. And that's what I'm wondering. Do you think that it, it almost appears to me that we're, you know, we'll probably get a limited nuclear strike here just to shake things up. No telling what they're planning yeah. on doing after that. When do you think these things are going to start coming out of the woodwork? I'd say in the next three years. And they're coming out of the woodwork now. But they're trickling so that it's not noticeable. And then after about three and a half years or so, I think that they're just going to come pouring out. And that's when God's going to separate us from them and destroy them. He's going to do it, in my opinion, he's going to do it in front of us. I don't think that we're getting raptured out. I think that we're, I, I really think we're going to have to go through the whole seven years because God never raptured nobody except Elijah and Enoch. And what did he do? He delivered people out. He didn't rapture them out of trouble. He delivered them. And to show his might and his power, he's going to deliver us from all that right in front of us so that we can see his might and his power. And, you know, the disciples longed for this day. They wished they could see it. His disciples wanted to see this day. Hmm. Tell us when it's going to be. Tell us when it's going to be. They wanted to see it. Yeah, I think they what it is is they good. knew that, right, you're at the final time. Things are. But so anyway, I think, um, you know, it's just, it's just going to be awful. You know, I, I can tell people what I've seen and everything, but some will believe, some won't. Praise God for the ones that believe and get born again because of it. And follow the Lord, Lord, quit doing the pagan holidays. I'm telling you, that makes it worse and worse and worse. It just does. Hmm. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a priest. I'm just telling you what I know for a fact. It makes it worse. Pagan holidays are their high holy days. And it makes it bad. Yeah, you know, I, um, I, can, I can only imagine, brother, and I, and I think most people probably would agree when it comes to the Halloween for sure, but I can only imagine there's a lot of other holidays out there that are really uh celebratory for them so but anyway brother greg can yes. you share with people how they could support the work you do brother that way and we'll put it in the description as well for people yeah it's um my address is 325 angora drive bostic north carolina 28018 325 angora drive as that a-n-g-o-r drive G O R A. G O R A. Angora. Okay. And what part of North Carolina? Bostic. B O S T I C. Bostic, North Carolina. And the zip code one more time, Brother Greg. 28018. Amen. Listen, we so much appreciate you, brother, coming on here and, and speaking openly and candidly about the things that you've known and <laughs> witnessed. Uh, and for those of you listening, you have Brother Greg's information. It is It will be in the description as well. And we uh, appreciate you so much, Brother Greg, for taking the time out to share these things. I know they're frightening, uh, but yet the thing is, is 
you know, there's, there's, as the Bible says, fearful sights are coming up on this earth. It's going to happen, mm. you know, and I like the way you said it at the beginning of the broadcast. You really better know Jesus Christ, Yeshua, how, whatever name you want to call him by. There's so many different names you got. In Hebrew, we got about four, Yeshua, Yeshu, Yahushua, uh, you know, uh, Isu, I think, in Greek and and in every other language on the earth, everybody calls him by a different name. But nonetheless, knowing from your heart, really and genuinely know that that relationship between you and him is so great. Like what Brother Greg said in this broadcast, you can draw those spirits to you. You can draw those demons, those alien entities. Everything can be drawn to you by the way you pull on that. Well, if that can happen... How much more could you draw the Holy Spirit to come in your defense in a time of trouble? Right. right? It's just a matter exactly. of knowing who you're meditating on. 